I'd just like to introduce the uh, Hall of Fame committee, if I could, if they could stand. We have Martha Jameson, our athletic director. Ali <laughs> DiMacito, so I'd like glad to stand up. Jimmy Jaranitis. John Mahoney. Scott McKee. Coach Larry Walsh. We have all the videos and uh, recordings and websites and all that is in charge by our uh, ex-school librarian, Linda Redding. All of the, uh, the boards at the high school with all the plaques and that whole area is uh, basically maintained and built by Peter McClellan. And there's me. I'm on the board too. Are there any uh, Hall of Famers who are present Hall of Famers already? Would you stand and be recognized? So I have a few things to say before we begin, and then uh, we'll move along quickly. But I'd like to tell a little bit about the story of the group uh, as it came to be. And simply in 2004, the Civil Lake Regional High School split uh, into two different school districts between Civil Lake and Pembroke. And as a coach of over 23 years, and then as athletic director, I felt that we were at a crossroads and that some of the athletes from Pembroke may actually be left in limbo at that time. Uh, being a coach of the soccer team with kids from all four towns over those years, uh, I really did feel as though they might get left behind. So, also in recognizing some of the kids that were part of Civil Lake itself. So in 2006, we formed a committee, basically a committee of five uh, interested Civil Lake coaches and alumni and we began the process with an extremely limited budget. So myself, John Montosi, Dick Arietta, Stephen Duggan, and Peter McClellan put in that first humble event in 2007, which has become, as I said before, our eighth class event in 2023, today. Celebrating over 70 Hall of Fame inductees and teams, and in this time, this year being no exception. Times have changed. Many times people ask or tell us or want to know who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame and how we select them. Um, we normally get a lot of questions like that. I just want to say I don't want to go into it all right now. Uh, there will be a time for that at some point, but we absolutely have criteria for selection, but the first step is always in the nomination process. And all the athletes that are here today have been nominated by someone, uh, either close to them or friends of theirs, or even family members. And the nomination process then begins a request for information, and then we meet as a group, and we have criteria based on all the different nominations. So that's how it begins. I uh, just want to let you know, too, that we have a, uh, an open meeting to join the committee. Uh, it'll be sometime in April. And uh, we have a website that has all of this information, which will include everything from today, including the videos, uh, the pictures, uh, pictures of your tables and uh, members of the family that are at the one. It is one word, silverlakehof.org. And it's specifically for the Hall of Fame. All right? All right. So the process, I will read uh, one of the things that we did this year for, uh, which is all brand new. As a matter of fact, many things are brand new from uh, all previous uh, Hall of Fame uh, ceremonies, is that we produced a video <clears throat> to introduce rather than having nominators come up and, and speak and tell stories that only they knew about. And uh, most people just sat and ate their food. 
So, what we did uh, is we made a video. Now, we didn't necessarily anticipate this many people being here today either. Uh, plus, we had to block the room down because of the, uh, the events and the weather. And it's a very, very light room, very bright, and all of you are very bright people. And so you really can't see the video, which is unfortunate because we spent a lot of time on it and it's been very good. It is a very good video. However, you can hear the voice describing the video. We will play it. And it is going to be on the website for you as of uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so we'll play the video. And one of the things that we did ask, we did ask was that each nominee uh, answer some questions that we sent them when we congratulate them on their nomination. What I will do is read a quote or two from each one of them as they come up. We'll play the video, which outlines a lot of the criteria that we use to uh, select them. And then I'll ask that person to come up and receive their plaque and a poster that was uh, in the reception area, and then to say a few words. Um, and that will be the process today. All right? Christy, it's the only place we misspelled your name. <laughs> and you can't see it, so that's good. <laughs> so Christy, for Schimmel, wrote, being able to compete for gymnastics on a high school team is a very different uh, competition from a private gym. For high school gymnasts, you get to compete as a team and work together to beat the opponent. There are individual awards as well, but as a whole, you work together and try your best for the team. Being able to go from a private gymna gymnastics to high school was an amazing experience that I will never forget. Good. Silver Lake's class of 2002, Christy Four Schimmel through her success in the first girls gymnastics team, becomes a member of the Silver Lake Hall of Fame class of 2022. Christy was instrumental in the formation of the first Silver Lake girls gymnastics team in 1998. She was a four-year varsity member of the gymnastics team from 1998 through 2002, where she competed on the balance beam and all-around competition. Christy was selected three times as an Old Colony League All-Star on the balance beam and a four-time Old Colony League All-Star in the all-around competition. She also qualified for the All-State competition as an individual, competing on the balance beam exercises as well as qualifying with the team for South Sectional competitions for three straight years. Overall, Christy was recognized as the Old Colony League's most valuable player in the 2001-2002 season and along with others helped to establish the young team as a league contender. Ms. Four went on to compete at Rhode Island College from 2002 to 2006 and returned to Silver Lake as the gymnastics coach for a combined Silver Lake Pembroke team. Christy coached the team for 10 years and won five Patriot League titles during that time. Mrs. Schimmel is presently a teacher at Kingston Elementary School. Please welcome Hall of Famer Christy Four. piece of my heart. Uh, when I was little, my mom made me try all the sports. I quickly failed or was bored with all of them. My grandma was the one that suggested gymnastics, as she called it. Therefore, my first thank you goes out to her. Um, at the age of seven, I started gymnastics and quickly climbed up the competitive chain and was invited on the team. Gymnastics was my love and my life. I cartwheeled everywhere, even when I wasn't in the gym. By the time high school was approaching, Silver Lake did not have a gymnastics team. My mom, along with the mothers of my teammates from our club gym, knew something had to be done. We were determined to bring gymnastics to Silver Lake. It was no easy feat. We met with the athletic director, Bill, to plead our case. We find, found a coach who's here today, Lindsay Lee Consolati. And as a small group, we fundraised for all of our equipment and all of our uniforms. Looking back and realizing how special high school gymnastics was, I was so thankful we pushed to get the team. High school gymnastics was one of the best times in my life. 
My team was like a family. Club gymnastics and high school gymnastics were very different. With high school gymnastics, you got to work as a team, form bonds, and have memories that last forever. I remember bus rides, practices, stairs and running, lots of running through the halls, even with our coach chasing us. Gymnastics was not easy. There were times I wanted to give up, especially when my friends were at the mall on Friday night and I was in the gym. I can thank my high school coach for keeping my love alive, Lindsay Lee Gonzalotti. At the school where I teach, we talk about playmakers, the people who will never forget in their life and who made a huge impact on us. She is my playmaker. She pushed me to do my best, but somehow always kept me motivated and excited to be there in the gym. I can even thank her for getting me into coaching myself. Another reason to be so thankful. I was able to take my love for gymnastics and all that I learned from her and instill that love into, the, into my own gymnasts. A few of them being here today, Mary Gallant, Caroline Budetto, um, the bonds and memories. I only hope that some of those gymnasts can call me their playmaker someday. The bonds and memories made as a coach will always forever be a huge part of my life as well. I also need to thank my mom and dad with all my heart, my biggest fans and supporters. I can say with confidence they never missed a gymnastics meet, even when I competed in college and the meets were all the way in Pennsylvania. They were always rooting for me. They took me to and from every practice, and I now know with three of my own kids how hard that is, and I appreciate it. They never complained once and did it with smiles and lots of hugs. They truly are the best and I really owe it all to them. Being able to compete, coach, receive this award, and have my children also attend this school and hopefully play some sports there too um, is truly something special. My heart is so full, I am beyond honored to accept this word, award, and I thank you, Martha, for not only giving me the opportunity to coach at your school, but for giving me this award. And also thank you to Bill for giving me this award and hosting this wonderful ceremony. I took over in 1990, and when I concluded my career in 2012, we saw tremendous success. In fact, since my first year as a coach in 1990, Civil Lake Girls Softball had made the state tournament 32 consecutive years in a row with multiple league titles. I would like my time as coach to be remembered as one who helped grow the program to where it has become today. Mike Brown. Silver Lake teacher and coach Mike Brennan, through his success and commitment as the girls' softball coach, becomes a member of the Silver Lake Hall of Fame class of 2022. Mr. Brennan came to Silver Lake in 1985 as a social studies teacher and immediately became involved in coaching girls' basketball and girls' soccer at the sub-varsity level. His longest tenure is actually as the girls' junior varsity basketball coach, where he continued to coach until his retirement in 2011. Taking the varsity position of the girls' softball team in 1990, Coach Brennan would go on to win over 300 games and coach the team in 22 straight years of MIAA state tournaments. Mike's teams have winning records in 22 out of 23 seasons, winning both the Old Colony League and Patriot League as champions six times. He has coached numerous all-scholastics from the Patriot Ledger, Rockton Enterprise, Boston Globe, and Boston Herald, as well as being selected as Softball Coach of the Year in 1993. In 1990, Coach Brennan took over as head coach. The Silver Lake softball program was already a successful girls' spring program. Mike not only continued in that success, he grew the program to one of the very best high school programs in southeastern Massachusetts. Mike has helped produce and coach many players who would go on to successful college careers, including Hall of Famers Kate O'Donnell and Maddie Barone. His 335 career wins rank as one of the best in Massachusetts softball and gave continued recognition to the Silver Lake program. Mr. Brennan retired from Silver Lake Middle School in 2011 and resides in Weymouth. Please welcome 2022 Silver Lake Hall of Fame member, Mike Brennan. <laughs> All 
I would first like to uh, thank the Hall of Fame committee and um, also uh, all the other inductees. So this is a great day. Uh, thanks also to Tom Benby. Tom's the one who nominated me for this position, so thank you, Tom. Also, um, special thanks go to all, all my players and coaches from the 23 teams that I coached. The other ones that made it possible for me to be up here. You know, I took the job, the first job coaching was 1990. And at that time, we were playing in the Old Colony League. And the dominant team in that league was Taunton. No surprise there. Um, Taunton in 1990 was going on five years of never losing a league game. So after watching them play and playing against them, I set a goal. And that goal was that someday, hopefully, we would be that dominant type team. Well, it didn't happen that first year. We went 8-12 and 12 and missed the playoffs. But I like to think that the success we had over the next 22 years kind of laid the foundation to where that Civil League team is today. Uh, starting in 1991, the team has 32 winning seasons, been to the playoffs 32 times, has multiple league titles, was the 2015, thanks to Coach Pina, uh, Division I South champion, and I've had two players achieve significant individual honors. In 2005 and 2006, Katie O'Donnell, who was a member of this Hall of Fame, was the Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year runner-up. In 2016, Matty Barone was the Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year award winner. So I guess you could say that Silver Lake softball is now one of the more dominant teams around. So how do we get there? Well, it helps to have good players. And I was fortunate to be able to coach quite a few of them. And none better than the two I just mentioned, Katie and Natty. It also helps to have real good assistant coaches. And I had one of the best in my longtime assistant, Jim Button. If two names could be put on this plaque, Jim's name should be on here with me. I can honestly say, I don't win nearly as many games or claim as many league titles if I don't have Jim Button on the bench with me. I coached for 23 years. I had a lot of good teams, but that 2012 team was the best team I ever had. Actually, 2012, that might have been the best year this program has ever had. The freshman team that year went 16-0, the JV team went 20-0, and the varsity went 22-3. So a 58-3 record, I would guess my goal I said 23 years before had finally come true. We also won the Patriot League title that year, again. Again, we went to the playoffs, where we went all the way to the Division I South semifinals before losing to the number one seed, Bridgewater Random, two to one in nine innings. Now, Maddie doesn't remember that game, but her big sister, Alex, certainly <coughs> does. Now, we did that, we, we did that whole game at, at that time, Maddie was just a freshman, so that's why she didn't remember it. Um, at that point, after that game, I retired. And many people have asked me since when I retired, did I have any regrets? Only one. And the answer I gave then is the same answer I'll give today. I often wondered what might have been if I had stayed and coached Maddie four years of high school. I always think about that. Um, I want to say one thing too, I coach for, I coach multiple sports for 32 years, pretty much every season, whether it was in Weymouth or here at Silver Lake. And in all that time, I received nothing but support, complete support from my family, and I want to thank them for that. 
And something my son Sean told me has always stayed with me. When I was coaching, my son Sean was a sports reporter for the Boston Herald. And whenever there was a big game, the Herald would assign Sean to cover it. Didn't matter what sport. In 2012, he got the assignment to cover my game against Duxbury here at home. It was a big game because the winner would win the Patriot League title. When he arrived, he decided he'd cover the game standing on the Duxbury side of the field. Now, for those of you who have ever saw me coach, you might say I was somewhat animated. I got pretty worked up. Uh, I was always moving around, always talking. Well, this evidently wasn't sitting too well with the Duxbury fans. And according to Sean, they were trash talking me pretty good throughout the whole game. How can they play for that guy? He's got to be the worst coach ever. They must hate playing for him. Well, when the game ended, and we had won 12 to nothing, <laughs> Matty pitched a two-hitter. Still bothers me you gave up those two hits. <laughs> Sean turned to the crowd and said, can't be that bad playing for him. One, he's won multiple league titles, including another one today. Two, his teams go to the playoffs every year. And three, he's won over 300 games. And as Sean walked away, he turned and said, oh, and one more thing, he's also my dad. <laughs> He said the look on their faces was priceless, just like this award. Thank you very much. influence that were truly my coaches, Stephen Andes and Dick Arietta. Without their teaching, patience, knowledge, and toughness, I wouldn't be here today. They allowed me to utilize my talents freely on the court, which, through trial and error, made me a better all-around player and teammate. I cannot say enough how blessed and fortunate I was to have not only two great coaches that happened to be educators, but they were both even better people. Neil Andrews. Silver Lake's class of 1992, Neil Andrews, through his success in boys basketball, becomes a member of the Silver Lake Hall of Fame class of 2022. Neil was a four-year varsity basketball player from 1988 through 1992 and was a prolific offensive force for the Lakers. During his time at Silver Lake, he was only the second male player to accomplish the 1,000-point plateau in 1992, scoring 1,013 points. His scoring abilities were instrumental in the success of the basketball team in both his junior and senior year as the boys' team record went from eight wins in his sophomore year to 17 wins in his final season. In his senior year, the team won the Old Colony League Championship and were seeded number two in the South Division I MIAA Tournament. Neal's personal accomplishments include all scholastics from the Patriot Ledger, Brockton Enterprise, and Boston Globe. He was also the leading scorer for the Old Colony League in 1992 and was voted as the league's MVP that year. Massasoit Neal was selected to the first team All New England squad. Mr. Andrews resides in Cohasset with his wife Allison and son and daughter. Neil continues to be active in playing and coaching basketball for recreation and youth league teams. Please welcome Class of 2022 Hall of Famer, Neil Andrews. Don't need the glasses yet. <laughs> 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 
first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to the Hall of Fame Committee for this induction and organizing this day. I truly appreciate this honor. Also, congrats to all the other inductees here today. When I reflect on my playing career at Silver Lake, the first thing I think of is how fortunate I was to have two great coaches in Steve Fernandes and Dick Ariana. Coach Fernandes was my coach freshman and sophomore years. Right away, he had me serve the most important apprenticeship a young, confident player can experience. Being placed on varsity as a freshman, practice, observe high-level intense games, and understand what it takes to excel at the D1 level in high school. Also, he taught me how hard, how hard you had to play all the time. No plays off. If you didn't, let's just say he had a certain way of making sure his messages were heard. Coach Ramirez was someone who demanded respect, organization, and attention to detail. He would also do anything for his players. His tough and teaching nature was exactly what I needed as a young player, for that I am forever grateful to have had him as a coach. My coach for my junior and senior season was the late, great Dick Arietta. I had known Coach Arietta since I was in elementary school. My brother Keith was one of his captains on the 84-85 team. Coach Arietta, like Coach Fernandez, was also a teacher by trade. He had a wise, sage presence of coaching experience, which led him being inducted into the Mass Coaches Hall of Fame. Our senior year was the best year of basketball I ever experienced. He allowed me to be me, as well as the rest of our team, for the most part. And it led to one of the most successful seasons in our program history. OCL champs, a slim margin of a loss to those Brockton boxes in the South Sectionals in my last high school game. Coach Arietta would do anything for his plays as well. The story that sums him up to me personally is in the spring of my senior year, my playing career over, he had heard that Stan Van Gundy, who recruited me to play at UMass Lowell, actually left to accept another coaching position. He asked me, you sure you still want to go? If you want, I can give Carl Fogel a call at Northeastern and see what he says. I didn't take him up on the offer, but for him to just think of me after I was no longer playing for him spoke volumes about his character. Again, how very fortunate was I to have both of these two great people as coaches for my four years of high school. I also can't ever forget all my high school teammates who tolerated, and at times, slightly difficult, over-competitive teenage Neil Michael Andrews. <laughs> all of you deserve recognition and accolades and wings in heaven for your patient. Especially my other brother, Mike Morris. We've been best of friends for over 30 years. Best move you ever made was leaving Sacred Heart. It worked out great for both of us. To my actual brother, Keith, not sure if I would have had the love and passion for the game if I didn't see you compete in high school. My most vivid memory is that tournament game against Brockton High School at their gym in 85. They had one of the best teams in mass basketball history. The Lakers lost that night. Y'all fought, worked hard as you could. All I knew in that moment as a fifth grader was, I gotta be part of that one day. Without your leading example, I'm not sure if I would have uh, pursued or loved the game as much as I did, and still do. Thank you, Keith. I'd be in trouble if I didn't uh, thank my three sisters, Vicky, Stacy, and Jacqueline, as well as my godmother, Kathy. Thank you for all the support, rides, and always being there for me over the years. Ma, love you. Thanks for all your support as well. Dad, I know you're watching over saying something that has zero to do with basketball, like a random yo from the stands. But as one of my high school teachers once told me, he was your biggest fan. I always knew that. They said two things to say, I'll stop talking as my time is up soon. First, stay in contact with people from the past. For example, your coaches. Prior to Coach Arietta's passing, I had seen him only one other time in my father's wake in 2013, before he passed away in 2017. The thing I regret most is that I didn't maintain contact with him <clears throat> as those four years went by so fast. Time flies, send the text, make the call, you won't regret it. Second, in memory of Dick Arietta, and along with many others, I'm sure, would hope that one day the court at Silver Lake is named after him in his honor for all he did for the student athletes of Silver Lake as well as Kingston. And actually, I got one more thing. To my wife Allison, son Avery, and daughter Addison, thanks for tolerating my Glory Day stories from my Silver Lake basketball career. <laughs> Just because I'm inducted doesn't mean they're over. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks, everyone. Go Lakers. the stories are true. <laughs> Quote, I had a 
very positive experience playing basketball at Silver Lake. There was a sense of community. I witnessed it at a young age coming up through the youth programs in Halifax. Mr. Steele, not Coach Steele, Mr. Steele, was always very involved in the town programs and his support meant a lot to me growing up as an athlete. As a high school scholar athlete, there is definitely a sense of prize, responsibility, and accountability. I have been able to translate many of the lessons and skills learned on the court into real life. Lifetime management, management and self-discipline, and how to be a team player. How to give and receive feedback, leadership, and so much more. These qualities have shaped me into the person that I am today. Courtney Yost Fulman. Courtney Yost Fulmine was an outstanding Silver Lake athlete in both volleyball and basketball from 2008 through 2012. She was only the third female in school history to score over 1,000 points in her basketball career, with a total of 1,324 points. Her individual career accomplishments leave little doubt as to her athletic abilities and success. She impacted the girls' basketball team from her freshman year, being selected as a four-time Patriot League All-Star and three-time leading scorer of the Patriot League. During that time, Courtney was also selected three times to the Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic basketball team. As the leading scorer, she led her team to four consecutive MIAA tournament appearances, and as a junior and senior team captain, won the Patriot League championship in 2010-2011. Courtney was also an integral part of the varsity volleyball team during the 2009 through 2011 seasons, being selected to the Patriot League All-Star Volleyball team in 2011. She played for outside AAU teams and won eight state titles in basketball and successfully played at Roger Williams College in Rhode Island. Courtney has returned to Silver Lake this year and has taken up coaching as the varsity assistant girls basketball coach. During her senior year at Silver Lake, Courtney participated in an independent study where she researched and produced a documentary celebrating the 40th anniversary of Title IX. The documentary included an interview with then Massachusetts Senate President Teresa Murray. Courtney also produced a short video highlighting the school athletes and what they do for their communities, which was a finalist in a media competition sponsored by the MIAA. After Silver Lake, Courtney played basketball at Roger Williams in Rhode Island and was part of an eight-time state championship AAU basketball team. Currently varsity assistant coach for the 2022-23 Silver Lake girls basketball program, please welcome Hall of Famer Courtney Yost. <laughs> to thank all the um, inductees before me who set a very high uh, bar for the speeches. I don't know that I'll reach it, but great job. Um, but honestly, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this tremendous honor and personally recognize Ollie DiMacito, who I know is a huge advocate for me. Thank you. I'd like to thank my parents, Jeff and Sandy, for getting me involved in the sport of basketball at a young age and supporting me wholeheartedly throughout my career. I don't think at the time I truly recognized the dedication and commitment that was also required on their end, sacrificing their free time to drive me to practices, games, and tournaments, both locally and nationally, and in some instances internationally. I truly appreciate you both and don't think I can thank you enough. I would look at you, but I don't want to cry. <laughs> I'd like to thank all my coaches, starting from the beginning, back in the youth programs, all the way up through high school. Fortunate enough to have a few here in the room today, my dad, Mr. Baroni, and Coach Steele, Apologize, Coach Steele. Um, I got to know Coach Steele at a young age, attending Silver Lake summer hoop camps and other youth and rec programs in Halifax. He used to come and watch our travel games, and as I got older, I couldn't wait to one day play for him at the high school. I was lucky enough, and he was nice enough, to take a chance on me my freshman year and really put up with me for the next four. I am very grateful for the opportunity to have played under you. Lastly, I'd like to thank my teammates, who again, I'm lucky enough to have here, some here in the room today, Mariah Wicker, there you are. Mariah Wicker, 
Um, as a freshman, Mariah really took me under her wing, and now we've come full circle. Uh, she's now the head girls basketball coach at Silver Lake, and has once again taken me under her wing to help assist. I'm extremely lucky to have such a great network of people, including my husband, who didn't know me at the time, um, but definitely was my biggest supporter getting into the Hall of Fame, my biggest cheerleader. Also, my friends and family, um, who have always supported me. This award is not possible without any of them. So this is an amazing honor, and I am so grateful. Thank you. Junior, he was the leader on the very young Silver Lake team. Dave leads by example, stated Lakers coach Jim McMorrow. In a tight game, he wants to puck to take the pressure off the rest of his teammates. A lot of the time, the fastest skaters I'm in trouble. do not know what to do with the puck because they don't know how to use their speed, stated McMorrow. Dave does by always looking for the opening. That's something you just don't learn. It comes naturally. Dave Moran. A member of Silver Lake's class of 1985, David Marani was a three-year varsity golf team member and four-year varsity ice hockey player. His successes in ice hockey are notable and recognizable as a Silver Lake Hall of Famer. In the successful years of Silver Lake ice hockey in the 70s and early 80s, David was recognized as one of the top players in Southern Massachusetts. As a captain in his junior and senior years, his outstanding play earned him two Old Colony League All-Star selections, two invitations to Hockey Night in Boston All-Scholastic Game, an event in Boston for Eastern Massachusetts All-Star players. David was also selected to All-Scholastic teams from the Patriot Ledger and Brockton Enterprise in both 1984 and 1985. As a Laker, he became only the fourth player at that time to accumulate 100 points by scoring 70 goals and 64 assists over his career on the ice for the Lake. In his senior year, he was a driving force in the success of the 1984-85 team by scoring 20 goals and adding 27 assists on the MIAA tournament qualifying team with a record of 13 wins, 4 losses, and 2 ties. David was also a captain of the golf team who won the Old Colony League Championship in 1983. He went on to Elmira College and Salem State College where he was a very successful collegiate player. After Silver Lake, Mr. Marani played at Elmira College and as a freshman had 23 points on the starting line. David then transferred to Salem State College, again becoming the leading scorer in both his sophomore and junior years as an integral part of their ice hockey team's success. David married Tracy O'Dowd, SL class of 88, and they have four children and have remained residents in the Silver Lake District. The new Silver Lake Athletics Hall of Fame member, Mr. David <laughs> Seen the assignment, Big Al. I didn't know I was supposed to do a quote, but let me first start by uh, thanking the committee for finally inducting me into the Hall of Fame. Especially starting to meet Coach Montosa, one of my biggest advocates. I've been joking for years that I'm the Susie Lucci of the Civil Life Hall of Fame. But after doing this research lately and getting all this stupid whatever, I, I just call my kids like I need time, I need time. This is all I got, and this was my nomination back in the day. My wife sent 2012. I don't have my phone. I'm going to give you the, the cliff notes of it. Who are you inducting, Dave Marani? 
Um, 81 to 85, Varsity Hockey. Played with Kevin Stevens. Um, <laughs> Silver Lake Golf, Varsity. And then question mark when I played. Like, played with Kevin Johnson. Good. And at the bottom, it actually said, why are you nominating this person? And she says, because he won't stop talking about it. <laughs> you committee members that I would give a shit to you kidding me how I am? I apologize. I wouldn't put me in either. I've been thinking about what I'm going to say for the past couple of days in this speech. Who am I shitting? The last 12 years. And because my buddy Joe Newton got in four years ago, is now why we're all limited, because his speech was, I don't know, what was it, 45 minutes? It went from the first day he ate solid food to his last track meet at his college. So now we're limited, so. I need to thank everybody that's here for me, and it will take me a long time, but honest to God, I love all of this. Thank you. Hockey's a sport that you make lifetime friendships with, and you never lose them. I mean, look at Tom Walton over there. You kidding me? And who brought the best looking kid in the place? Me, Bull Walton. Are you kidding? Look at this kid. But I'll start out with my high school career. My biggest accomplishment in my freshman year was making that team. 81, 82, they were stacked. John Neal, J.J. Flaherty, Kevin Stevens, Scott McKee, Walter Pratt, Sean Keen. They, I mean, it was unbelievable. A little side note to that. I wanted to follow in Timmy Mitchell's footsteps and Kevin Stevens' footsteps. Play football and hockey. I went to football camp. I said to Coach uh, Cucinato at the time after football camp, I need to can at least play once a week to keep my hockey skills up because I have a chance to make that varsity team. And I'll quote him, there isn't a freshman that's going to make that team. Well, myself, Jimmy Pierce, and Jeff MacGyver, we, we, we made it, you know, we all made it. And going into his class, social studies, our first day wearing those jerseys, I said, Coach, how am I making up, all right? <laughs> so that's why I became a golfer. And the one thing I found out about golf, you know, being a, it's an individual sport, being, being a team sport, it's a simple equation. You get people like Kevin Johnson and Kevin McKenna, you, I mean, forget about it. Kevin Johnson, who played in the PGA Tours, won six or seven times on the, on the small tours, and then Kevin McKenna, who was an unbelievable stick too, I mean, now he's getting thrown out at Marshall Country Club. Committees, <laughs> but hey, who's, who's whatever, you know what I mean? So. My second highest accomplishment, I feel, that was in, the, in my sophomore year, our state tournament um, bid. We played Winthrop, and I, I really feel that if McKee and Stevens held up their end of the deal being seniors, we probably would have made the garden that year. I mean, I'm just saying, I had a hat trick against Winthrop, two assists. I had a goal and two assists against Bill Ricca. Where were you guys? But in true fashion, my senior year, myself, Jeff MacGyver, and Pat Lydon did the same thing. We threw up on our skates, and Kevin McGee ended up being the hero. Go figure. <laughs> I practice this all morning. You guys are all hearing it. I got to tell some funny coaches I have stories about Coach Mills. Coach Mills, who's here? Can you stand up? Where is he? Right over here. So he came in our senior year. And we were, you know, we were Silver Lake hockey. There was nobody, I mean, kid, we thought, you talk about narcissism, oh my God. The 24 of us, there's nobody better. Don't you watch this on TV? <laughs> so, <laughs> one, one day, Mill says to us, I forget who got, who got hurt. We need to call somebody up from JV. You know, there was this kid in JV, John Peterson, I'm sure all of you know him. He was scoring a hat trick a game, he was lighting it up. But, my buddy Kevin McKenna just took up hockey. So us captains said, oh, this kid McKenna is nasty. <laughs> and I'm sure Kevin McKee, who did we play that game? Where is he? I think it may have been taunting. Right? I don't know. Whatever. So 
but I'm not going to bore you with my stats in college, which I, we have written down, but I will say, so I ended up at Salem State my junior year. We went out to um, Alaska and played in tournaments. I don't know why this day sticks with me, but January 7th, 1988 is when it all changed. Courtney, I'm going to be doing a crazy. <laughs> I found out Tracy was pregnant. Dick, oh, I have no idea how that happened, honest to God. <laughs> but the funny story of her getting pregnant was the way I told my mother. So I'm going back up to Salem State. She's got to drive me to the T station for me to get on the T and then go to Salem. I got my hockey bag, all my clean laundry that she just did all folded. And I didn't have the balls to tell her on the way to the T station. So I get out of the car, and I'm not, this is no lie. Get out of the car. The train's pulling in, and I said, oh, mom, hold on. I gotta tell you something. She said, what? No, they didn't have electric windows. You know? She rolled over, leaned on, and this barrel of smoke hits me from her weapon of freaking candles. I said, oh, Tracy's pregnant. I gotta go. There was no cell phones back then. I didn't have an answer machine. Mom, I, where are I? I apologize for doing that to you. But it is what it is, so all of my children, stand up. Bullshit, stand up. Amazing, amazing children. We're going to start with Jackie, Marissa, LD, the one story i got to tell about you. Mom and I were watching a 30 for 30 last week on Wayne Gretzky, and they were interviewing Ty Gretzky, and the pressure that he had to follow in his father's footsteps. I didn't realize I put that burden on him bringing on this other I apologize. But all kidding aside, my, my kids are amazing. I have my sixth grandchild on the way. She's due like in an hour, right? Still don't have a name. That's good, so whatever. But the biggest shout out has to go to my parents who, without you, hockey is one of these sports, 5 a.m. in the morning, you gotta go somewhere. And back when I couldn't drive, you, you know, you guys would take me, and I, I really appreciate it. And I'd be remiss not to mention my siblings. My sister Angelo, you know, they're in Jamaica right now. They, they didn't think it was that important to get here, but whatever. <laughs> She's a great field hockey player. My cousin, my, my brother Kevin, who played hockey and golf at Silver Lake, and actually played in the garden twice. And uh, that's all because of Coach Mills. It had nothing to do with that team. That team had no talent. <laughs> So if he was our coach in 81, I, I, I mean, seriously, I, I, forget about it. My sister Kerry, who I guess was a stud softball player, and in true Marani fashion, Coach Brennan, where is he, right? She played for you? In true Marani fashion, she hears the news and I'm getting in. She says, without skipping view, that's awesome. When am I getting in? So, I don't know. And I have to thank my beautiful wife, Tracy. The things you put up with are unreal. <laughs> but we have been together for 34 years. And it only feels like five. Underwater. <laughs> but thank you for everything you do, and I really mean it. <laughs> and just like Coach Cucinato, that I would make that varsity hockey team. I have two of my best buddies, Kevin Johnson and Kevin McKenna. We were married on May 13, 1989. Kevin Johnson was playing in the Memorial Golf Tournament, which is an invitation of Jack Nicholas. And they said, no, we're not going to make it. Even if he misses the cut, we're not going to pay for the flight. We're going to go out. I said, no problem. They both said, we'll go to your next one. <laughs> Three, four years later. <laughs> That's a true story. So, and finally, one of my best buddies, Joe Noonan, who beat me into the hall and advocated for me, along with Mahoney, thank you. Joe, we did it.
Quote, I had aspirations to play sports at the highest level, and being an athlete at Silver Lake Regional High School gave me the opportunity to continue to pursue that goal. I had the pleasure of playing with some amazing teammates that helped propel our team to the top of the state rankings, especially with some of those baseball teams from 2012 to 2016. Every time I put on that red jersey, I knew I was representing more than just myself, and that sense of school pride made playing sports so much more enjoyable. Anthony Vedetto. Anthony Vedetto, through his baseball success, is truly one of Silver Lake's most outstanding athletes. The Silver Lake baseball team last won a league title in 1960, and beginning in Anthony's freshman year, the baseball team won four straight Patriot League championships, ending a 51-year drought in baseball. He was selected as a three-time Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic, a Boston Globe All-Scholastic, and Boston Herald All-Scholastic, while also representing the Patriot League as a three-time All-Star. He led his team to selection to the Super 8 MIAA Tournament in 2014, to two appearances in the South Sectional Finals of the MIAA Tournament in 2013 and 2016, and as the South Sectional MIAA Champions in 2016. He finished his career with a 358 batting average, striking out only 26 times in 271 at-bats, and a final pitching record of 19-5 with an ERA of 1.37 with 152 strikeouts. Because of these extraordinary successes in recognizing his leadership, Anthony was selected to the All-State and All-New England baseball team, as well as the Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year for 2016. In 2020, he was selected to the Boston Herald All-Decade baseball team. After graduating, Anthony went to UMass Amherst, playing for three years, appearing in all 45 games his junior year in 2019 and all nine games in the COVID-19 shortened season of 2020. He graduated with a degree in kinesthesiology and is pursuing a doctor in physical therapy at Mass College of Pharmacy. According to his coach, Ken Tachi, Anthony was the best player on a great team that won many games during his tenure as a student athlete. As great of a player as he is, he is a better person and student who exuded character, positive values, and was a role model for all who met him. Anthony describes how he feels about the legacy of his team. The baseball program from 2012 to 2016 should be remembered as a powerhouse in Massachusetts high school baseball. Every time we stepped on the field, we felt like we were going to win, and the majority of the time we did. Please welcome 2022 Silver Lake Hall of Famer, Anthony <laughs> Davis. Saving trees out there, right? Did you just see what he did? He didn't pull out a piece of paper. He opened his phone and his speech right up. <laughs> huh? 1985, 2016. <laughs> Alright, thank you all for being here today. Um, I first want to thank the committee for recognizing me and selecting me uh, for this award. Um, it's an honor to stand up here in front of all of you today. Um, and be recognized with so many great athletes and coaches in Silver Lake history. Uh, I would also like to congratulate the other inductees for being selected. It's an honor to, honor to share this day with all of you um, and to you know, recognize all of your great careers at Silver Lake. Um, I have to first thank my family, uh, my mom and my dad, for always being there for me. I absolutely would not be here in this position where I am today if it weren't for both of you. Um, I can probably count on one hand how many games you both missed from five to when I was in college. So thank you both so much. I appreciate you more, more than you know. Um, I also have to thank my sister Caroline who's here today. Um, you know, a big thank you to her for always pushing me to be the better athlete um, because I always, <laughs> obviously couldn't let my little sister surpass me in that department. Um, but she is a Jets fan now, so we don't really associate with her. Um, I also want to thank my girlfriend Sam and her amazing family for being here today. Um, you guys have 
love me and support me through the, the past eight years in my career and, and so much more. So I thank you guys for being here today. Um, I also have to thank my amazing teammates that I had throughout my four years at school, uh, both on the field and on the court. Uh, a few of those guys are here today. Willie G and J.O. had some amazing memories on the court with you, J.O., and, and on the field with both of you. Um, I have to thank my coaches next, uh, Coach Tachi, for some amazing four years at school. Uh, we won so many games together, and uh, I have to thank you for um, your mentorship through those four years and developed me, developed me into the player that I that I became. So thank you, uh, both. And then on the court as well, Coach Pina and Coach uh, Donovan, I uh, had the pleasure of working with both of them on the court. So thank you for pushing me to become a better athlete and an even better person. So thank you. I won't keep it too long. Um, you know, there are so many great memories I have at school, uh, so many great wins, so many great accomplishments. Um, but I think one of the things that kind of defines my career more so is, uh, you know, in defeat. I remember my sophomore year, we got selected into the inaugural Super 8 tournament, and we unfortunately lost in the third game that year. And I remember getting on the bus and just bawling my eyes out like a baby just being like, wow, I can't believe we lost. But more so the fact that, you know, the seniors were gonna be gone that next year and I wasn't gonna be able to play with them for another year. And I think that kind of defines um, me and how I look at, you know, sports as a whole. Obviously you wanna win and win more than you lose, but it's more about the, the memories you make along the way and uh, the teammates that you create from friendships for life. Um, so for me, that kind of, you know, drove me to always pursue um, you know, sports in college and, you know, have so many great memories with so many great people along the way that I'm, you know, still in touch with until this day. Um, so that's all I got. So thank you all. Members of the Silver Lake softball program and other programs in the school were always held to a such high standard in regards to how we acted as athletes and individuals. This accountability helped shape me not only in a college af as, as a college athlete, but also as a working adult and a college coach. The softball program at Silver Lake taught me how to be a leader, a teammate, and a responsible, hard-working individual. Maddie Baroni. Silver Lake's class of 2016, Maddie Barone. Through her success in girls varsity soccer, girls varsity basketball, and girls varsity softball, becomes a member of the Silver Lake Hall of Fame class of 2002. Maddie Barone was an outstanding three-sport athlete at Silver Lake, but excelled in her girls softball accomplishments. Her pitching record in varsity softball was 80 wins and 8 losses while pitching two perfect games and having a career batting average of 432. She helped to carry her teams to four league championships, was a four-time league all-star. Maddie Barone was selected to all scholastic teams for the Patriot Ledger, Boston Herald, and Boston Globe three times and was selected as the Boston Herald Player of the Year twice. Maddie Barone was also recognized nationally by the National Softball Coaches Association as Player of the Year and was named the Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year in 2016. Maddie, Maddie was, was not, not only an outstanding, outstanding student, student athlete, athlete with all of these accomplishments, accomplishments listed, she was an honor roll student, student at Silver Lake as well. As well. She, she exemplified all the qualities of a true Silver Lake athlete, athlete in her teamwork, teamwork leadership, work, work ethic, ethic, and responses to competition on and off, and off the field. field. After graduating in 2016, Maddie attended Southern New Hampshire University and continued to dominate the Northeast 10, culminating in selection to the 2019 Northeast 10 First Team and honorable mention NCAA D2 All-America Award. Finished with a career record of 51 and 24 with 431 strikeouts. Please welcome 2022 Silver Lake Hall of Famer, Maddie Burrow. Not my forte. 
forte, so this is going to be a little quick. Um, I am incredibly humbled and honored to be receiving this award. I first want to start by congratulating the other inductees who are amazing coaches and athletes. I want to thank a handful of people today, starting with my coaches who got me here. Growing up playing four sports, softball, basketball, soccer, and gymnastics at the town and club level, I've had my fair share of coaches who have all left their own mark on the athlete and person I have become. I was fortunate enough to have coach Kim Paponiak as a pitching coach and mentor for 10 years, and coach Carol Savino as a club coach for six. Those wonderful women helped shape both the player I was and the person I am today, for which I am forever grateful. The lucky streak continued with coach Kurt Schilling, who taught me the ins and outs of the game. These three, along with Coach Mike Brennan, Coach Tony Pina, and Coach Buffy Hines, taught me how to show up for our teammates and myself every day. With all of these wonderful coaches also came assistant coaches who I still, to this day, have wonderful relationships with and use some of their mantras they instilled in me for my assistant coaching job today at Stonehill University. All of these wouldn't have been possible without the hard work of Martha Jameson, who never stopped believing in an athlete at this high school, especially us female athletes. To Rich Critch, who helped me start my softball career by showing me what it meant to be to constantly put in hard work and how it will take you to where you want to go. To my full-time coach, my dad. Sorry, Mom, but I think we can give Dad this one. Um, some of you may have seen him at every game, sitting not next to my mom, but next to Rich Critch in the same spot and taking his own stats for the team. Dad, thank you for the endless hours of sitting on a bucket during my lessons, getting hit in the shins, and chasing drop balls. If it wasn't for you yelling, use your legs when I was hitting or mix it up to throw a change up, I wouldn't be receiving this honor today. I think I can speak for many people when I say that the time and energy you have put into the local softball organizations has had a huge impact on the Silver Lake softball program, supplying not only great athletes, but amazing people too. And to my mom, thank you for making it to every game, even if it meant packing up a baby and sitting in a baby gate corral in the outfield. As many of as many may agree, you weren't the quietest amongst the crowd, but you're always my biggest fan. And to my sister, Alex, thank you for being a role model to me throughout my softball career. I am sure not many people can say they got to play varsity sports with their sister, let alone have them be their catcher as a far freshman, starting freshman, sorry. <laughs> While there may have been a lot of yelling and threatening to have to walk home and not take the school bus, I am forever grateful for it and you. So Lake Athletics teaches you to lead, be a good teammate, and to fight battles in life and sports at such a young age. It sets, up, it sets us up to pursue what we put our minds to and be successful at that. The confidence and courage I built in my years at Silver Lake Athletics led me to starting my own successful business. To the rest of my siblings, Nick, Derek, Cody, my extended family, friends, and my boyfriend, Will, thank you all for supporting through these years and still to this day. Finally, I want to thank my teammates who Caroline's the only one here, but, and Alex, sorry. Um, <laughs> without all of you, I wouldn't have had the success I did in any sport, and I definitely would not be standing here today. Thank you for lifelong friendships and memories. I am so, again, I am so honored to receive this award, and I cannot thank this community enough. quotes from uh, all of the individuals, uh, we received those, and from the team we received a few, but I picked out one that kind of uh, generally gives you the uh, player attitude of a team when they're coming up here. The soccer program was cool. You know, we got to play soccer outside every day after school. <laughs> Whether that was a practice or a game, it didn't matter. Couldn't ask for anything better. I would like that time to be remembered by all the fun and shenanigans we had as a team. It's very typical. Soccer team from 2013, 
state semifinalists. The 2013 Boys Varsity Soccer Team, South Sectional Champions. The 2013 Boys Varsity Soccer Team completed the regular season as Patriot League champions with a regular season undefeated record of 17-0-1. Coming on the heels of a disappointing shootout loss in the 2012 postseason, led by captains Tim Barrow, Sean Hurlbert, and Brendan Nemes, the boys worked all offseason to ensure that they began the season ready to play. After a hard-fought 2-2 tie at Weymouth, the team won its next 17 regular season games by a combined score of 78-7. The 2013 Silver Lake boys soccer team were not shut out in any game all season and set both the goals for and goals against record in program history. They won their second consecutive Patriot League title and went on a postseason run by beating Milford in the first round 6-0, Mansfield in the second round 5-2, New Bedford in the South semifinal 5-0, and after a full-time score of 1-1 against Needham in the finals, the team progressed with an overtime win to become the 2013 South sectional champions, a feat that had only been achieved once before in Silver Lake boys' soccer history. The team eventually fell to Somerville High School in the state semifinals by a score of 2-1, leaving the Lakers with a final record of 21-1-1, a season with just one loss. Team members of the 2013 Hall of Fame boys soccer team. Coach Mr. Dan Correa and assistant coach Joshua Walsh. Captains Tim Barrow, Sean Hurlbert, and Brendan Nemes. Players Elijah Bain, Paul Beatty, Matt Calabro, Matt Koshan, Alex Chafe, Brian Conini, Adam Crawford, Weston Dennett, Will Gallagher, Matt Greeley, Brendan Gilderson, Walter Ho, Sean Hunt, Patrick Hutchinson, Jake Keane, Jonathan Lawson, Stephen McSwain, Evan McSherry, Carter Migre, Joshua O'Neill, and Kevin Pava. Welcome to the 2022 Hall of Fame. All right, first of all, I wanted to um, thank the committee for putting together this whole event and for the honor that they bestowed upon our team. Um, I'd also like to thank, on a personal level, Mr. Johnson for entrusting me to run the program that he created and often refers to as his baby. <laughs> um, and also to Martha Jamison for her support um, throughout my whole career, but in particular that season, she was um, visible and a driving force behind everything we did. Um, on a personal level, I'd also like to thank my wife, Shannon, um, for holding things together at home and allowing me to, to do what I love and, and commit so much time to, to the team. Um, as I said in the video, we had a bittersweet end to the previous season um, with kind of an unexpected uh, shootout loss to Braintree at home under the lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that that really laid the groundwork for what was to happen in 2013. Um, these guys were as close to a perfect combination of players that I've ever coached. Um, you know, from goalkeeper, defense, being able to score in multiple ways, um, fantastic teammates. Um, they're the closest group of guys I've ever coached. But I think that disappointment in that brain tree game really made them kind of galvanize and have a singular focus to do something special in 2013. Um, I can't think of a more special group to share that season with, um, and it was a crazy time for me and my family as well. My son was born the previous fall, my daughter was born the next fall, so that's what I mean by holding it together at home. Um, <laughs> it was a lot. Um, and it really is all about the guys on the team, and with that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to them. This is their moment. Hi everyone, contrary to the video, I'm Brendan Nemes, not Nemes, it's okay Bill. Um, and first of all, congratulations to all the inductees, you managed to do it as individuals, we had to do it as a team, so 
congrats to you. Thanks to the Hall of Fame Committee, and thanks, number one, to Coach Korea and Coach Boas, who isn't here, but they were awesome coaches, and we had an awesome time in our four years being a, a Silver Lake student athlete. Um, we drew straws about 20 minutes ago on who would talk, so I'll keep this short. <laughs> um, I'd like to say one thing, that the accolades are great, and the wins are awesome, the South Sectional Finals, all that, you know, why we're getting inducted. But that success is a lagging indicator of what we had to do as a team in preparation, right? You cannot pursue success, it must ensue and be a result of the dedication and discipline you have leading up to that. And that's what we had as a team. Every summer, we were holding each other accountable, going to the fields, running, playing 7v7, and it was just such a great group of guys. We had so much fun. And like Coach alluded to, a lot of shenanigans. <laughs> but I just wanted to say what a grateful experience all of us have. Like, what an awesome time to be a student athlete at Silver Lake. And I'm sure you all feel, feel the same. Thank you. Which is which is good. So I have a couple of things in closing. A couple of things in closing. First of all, I would like uh, all of the inductees to please stand and take one final round of applause. For them. It's always great uh, being actually on the committee. Uh, there are things when we have meetings, uh, a lot of times it's difficult to get stuff done because we start talking about Civil Lake history. We start talking about a game or a player or a coach or something else. But it's really, really rewarding to see, and uh, from my perspective anyway, to see all of the stats and the information about each one of these players and what they've done. Um, it really brings to light one of the main reasons why we did this is to keep these uh, memories and to keep these high-end uh, high athletes alive and coaches in our, uh, in our history of Silver Lake. And that's what it's doing. And again, I, I want to thank all the volunteers, the sponsors, and uh, the committee members themselves for the hard work in making today successful. I truly hope you thought it was successful too. And I hope that the Hall of Fame of the uh, committee made this a memorable day, memorable day for you. We congratulate all of you and welcome you to uh, our exclusive group as Silver Lake History. We also hope that you'll have some interest in continuing this relationship with the Hall of Fame Committee by participating in future class events and by attendance at maybe future inductee ceremonies um, to welcome new athletes to your particular Hall of Fame. Remember that we have all of our information on uh, silverlakehof.org. All of the information that was today will be on there. Every word? booklet for. Is that one word? Yes. Yes, it is. That's actually a very good. That's a very good question. Yes. Uh, and all of the booklets from 2007 to today, all eight classes are also listed there with all of the pages and the uh, history of all the athletes uh, on Silver Lake. Um, what I would like to do right now is you, you can, um, you can, you could pick up your glasses and whoever, um, no, I won't say that. The centerpieces are yours to take home. 
And I'm just going to let you guys decide how to do that. I was going to say something with the glasses, but I won't do that. I also would like to have, if you would, over by the sign at the far end, uh, all of the inductees with the plaque, with their plaque, all the inductees, including the team, um, to line up over there for a, pi a group picture. We do need those for our uh, historic booklet. And I hope that you have a great night. Congratulations to everyone. And thank you very much for coming and supporting us.